Hi, we're here at uh, Vexlar here down in Bloomington here in Minnesota. Here with Tom Zanenko, mastermind here at Vexlar Corporation. And what we're going to talk about is transducers. It's not uncommon that people know there are several different types of transducers available. But today we're going to touch on why they do what they do and really hit on that new transducer out for this season called the ProView. So Tom, let's talk about deucers. Well, thanks, Matt. Uh, Transducers here at Vexlar are a very big deal. You know, so many times when people think of marine electronics, they think about the box itself, you know, the visual thing of what you see, uh, the type of display and all that kind of stuff. The true fact of the matter is the transducer itself is responsible for 50% of the performance of your sonar. So it's very critical you understand what a transducer can do. In this particular case, the Vexilar Ice Deucer. It's a self-leveling transducer that actually is a weighted deucer that Vexilar designed and patented. So when you put it in the hole, it's always shooting straight down. The early versions of, of transducers used for ice fishing had flat tops on them and they put a bubble level on top to make sure that the deucer is shooting straight down at all times. And you'd actually have it on a stick and you'd adjust the stick and the bubble to make sure it shoots straight down. When Vexilar invented the Ice Deucer, that need of adjusting all the time went away. And so you're always shooting straight down with your transducer. And that's very critical, and I'll be talking about that later, because a lot of times when people say, oh, I, I can't see my lure, or something else is going on, it usually relates to the angle of the transducer, not hanging properly and things like that. Uh, Matt preluded a little bit to our new uh, blue-faced unit here. It's called the ProView Ice Deucer. And the ProView Ice Deucer is something that really has fulfilled a certain niche, especially for the ever-changing and ever-growing number of Vexilar fans out there who have uh, become more and more familiar with interference from other anglers and, and, and many anglers don't understand the true advantages of what a, a ProView uh, ice deucer can do to their fishing success. First, let's understand that Vexilar itself offers four different types of ice deucer. The 19 degree, which is standard on most of the FL8 units. Now, the 19 degree ice deucer is a nice little deucer. It's a very small profile. And this particular model is really good, in my opinion, down to 20, 25 feet. If you're fishing a lot deeper than that, the signal is so wide, it distorts the images and, and blurs things. And it's not as sharp and crisp as it could be. If you're looking for fish near the bottom, for example, and if there's a single rock nearby, you won't see it. So the 19 degree is good in shallow water applications. If you're in heavy, heavy weeds, it's almost too wide. Well, let me explain to you a little bit about how this 19 degree works. Now, I'm not going to give exact geometric numbers here, but the, when the transducer kicks out a signal and you're thinking at wide degree, now most people think of a cone view. When they look at an object, they say, well, I have a 19 degree cone, so it's a 19 degree, okay? Well, the true fact of the matter is, is all transducers have a different degrees of cones and it's not always in a cone shape. But what I'm trying to get at here is that if there is a boulder, for example, that's sitting here, or stalks of weeds that are in this area or this area, the 19 degree cone will pick it all up. And so you will see lots of objects down there that could uh, make it very difficult to see a small little jig on your line right here. So by using a narrower beam transducer, you cut out that big rock that causes the shadow. Because see, when, when you have a boulder here, and we get calls at Vexlar all the time from guys saying, you keep talking about the resolution of your units being so good, but I, I don't see my lure unless it's a foot off the bottom. You guys are lying to me. Well, the true fact of the matter is, we try to be nice to customers about it, is that they don't fully understand what the bottom is. Because if there's a boulder that sits up from the bottom, it creates a shadow, a sonar shadow, that masks anything that is below the top of the object. Could be a log, could be a drop-off. If you're fishing a drop-off, it'll pick up the highest point of the drop-off. So if you're fishing down here on a drop-off, you won't see the lure until it gets parallel or just a little bit above the actual shadow line created. You cannot avoid that problem. Now, Vexilar sonar systems are the very best sonar systems for seeing what we call below the bottom. But for, for most anglers, it's very difficult to see what goes on just below the shadow line. So the narrower the beam transducer you have, the less of a chance you'll have for clutter. So if I was fishing in a weed bed, for example, 
um, you would may want to use a very narrow beam transducer because then you won't see all the brush around you. You'll see what's directly below you. A lot of times people say, well, why don't I just get the Vexilar tri-beam? The tri-beam has an 8, a 12, and a 20 degree cone all in one. Now the tri-beam producer is a nice piece of technology. It has a simple switch box and it plugs into any Vexilar system. So if you've got an old FL8 from 30 years ago, not a problem, you plug it in, and it has a switch right here, it's 8, 12, I don't know if you can see that, it has an 8, 12, and 20 degree cone. And you simply switch from one to the other to maximize the scenario that you're in. But unfortunately, the, the performance of this transducer crystal is much more radical than any of the other what we call standard or single crystal designs. So the cone shape of these are much more uh, restrictive. The reason I say that is because in the world of transducers, and this is, this is probably gets me probably best to the 12 and now the pro view, is that there is no such thing as a cone like this. I mean, uh, the human mind can comprehend the cone. But if we were looking downward from the real perspective of what the crystal does, looking from the top down, a transducer cone may have many different lobes. And from a, from a top down scenario, a transducer cone may be shaped like this. Because sound never travels in a straight line as it radiates from the crystal or is received in a straight line. So from a top down perspective, you may not see a, a target here, but you will see a target if it's here. And so it's one of the things that a lot of people have a hard time getting their mind around. And, and it's one of the fun projects that I've done um, with uh, transducers because uh, several years ago, no one took the time to try to understand or to show people uh, how transducers really work in the real world. Because what really happens is that Mostly all transducers, in fact, all of them except for the tri-beam. The tri-beam doesn't have this. But all the other transducers on the market have two cones. A shallow water cone and the standard primary cone. So there's a primary and a secondary cone. One that is the shallow water range and one that is the narrow beam range. Uh, many people understand this when they buy a transducer. They say that's a 5200. When you say a transducer is a 5200, and Lawrence has these a lot for summertime applications, what you're using is the primary cone is the 200. But a secondary frequency the receiver can receive is the 50. So with the same crystal, they can make it perform like a dual beam. Of course, the performance of it's much different because the 50 has a much different dynamic in the water, but each crystal always has two frequencies to take advantage of. All crystals do. So they'll say that there are 50 and 200. That's one crystal that the receiver can actually sense. So you can give the illusion of a dual beam. The true fact of the matter is, when, when you do that, the secondary frequency is much weaker and it's much, much less efficient because it's not really designed for it as a primary concept. That's why Vexilar always has two crystals in our systems. When we say it's a dual beam, it's a two crystal system rather than one crystal designed for two different frequencies. It's much more efficient and much more uh, refined as far as performance in different applications. So one of the things that I did, and this is a fun thing, that I, and all of you could do this, and it, and it really, if you're into this ice fishing thing in a big way, I know Matt is because he's kind of one of these ice fishing freaks. But if you want to try this technique, it is really fun to prove exactly what your ice deucer does. You see, every ice deucer is different. Every single crystal is different. A transducer crystal is a piece of hard ceramic. It sits in the palm of your hand like a rock. And it's the dangest thing you ever did see. Because when you hit it with a shot of electricity, it emits a sound. And what's really amazing is that when the sound comes back in, it turns it back into a, a volt of electricity, a little sh tiny shock of electricity, and sends it back down the wire. Can you imagine that? A piece of ceramic baked at a certain temperature with a certain kind of chemicals all mixed to it can take energy, turn it into sound, take sound, and turn it back into energy. 
It's an amazing technology developed over 50 years ago. It hasn't changed in 50 years. But we as anglers need to adapt to that technology so that we can best use it for our applications. And that's part of the learning curve that we try to, to master as anglers. And we're always perpetually learning more things. So here is a little test that I conducted, and you can do it. It's very non-scientific, but it really is cool in how it works. First thing I did is here I was fishing on a lake, all right? And what I did is I drilled a hole here, and I drilled a hole about every foot across the surface of the ice. And by the way, when you leave the area after you're testing, make sure you mark the holes because it's pretty bizarre. But I usually drill holes about 10 foot away from the what I call the starting hole. And it's very cool. I'll put a transducer in this hole, and for best results with all transducers, you want them to suspend just below the bottom of the ice. So when you drop them down, you don't want them inside the hole, you want them just below the bottom of the ice to make sure it's hanging straight down. So what I do is I've got a transducer here, and then I just took a simple metal washer. Any, any object will work, but it's, it's ideal to get a really nice big target, because then you can get a good reflective bounce from it so you know exactly what's going on. And then what I would do is I would drop it down and I would mark the actual shape of what the sonar sound would do and I would actually be able to track the shape of it. And it, it works exactly, it's totally not scientific. You can put a tape measure across here and you can measure it. And what I did is you actually could see that the shape of your transducer cone looks like this. Now most of the testing is down to 40 feet because that's the normal range that most of us fish under. But when you see these weird looking side lobes, you're saying, boy, that's the strangest looking thing I've ever seen. But in the real world, and it was really cool because the Navy has these giant rooms that are acoustically designed for testing the, the shape of transducer cones for naval work, you know, for torpedoes and, and different types of sonar systems. So they need to know exactly the shape of the angle of the, of the transducer cones that they're selling or putting into different things like missiles or torpedoes. Well, this system mirrors exactly the footprint that was done in a multi-million dollar test lab. Because most people don't realize that ice fishing is the most controlled and refined environment for sonar. That's why Vexilar systems are head and shoulders above anyone else for sonar technology because we build it specifically for the stagnant environment of ice fishing. Summertime sonar can be much more generic or plain and you can make a sonar system much cheaper for summertime application because you're always moving. You're not looking at concise and exacting details. But when you're in a stagnant environment, standing still, and you want to see all the things around you, that is where a Vexilar excels for wintertime application. And you can actually conduct this test yourself and see exactly the shape of your particular transducer. Now one of the great things about this test was how well the ProView Deucer shined above all other transducers. And you're saying, well, well what is the angle of the ProView. Is it a super wide 19? In actuality, the ProView is a super narrow beam transducer, but it has all the characteristics that you can take advantage of. How you take advantage of it is controlled by your gain switch. Because if I turn my gain way down, this is the cool part, if I turn my gain way down, the display looks like this. Very cool. And that's why it keeps a very narrow beam. And so obviously it's, it's three-dimensional. Remember, it's three-dimensional. So it, from a down point of view, it's very small. But what the nine degree has found to do for us is it give us, with our gain control setting of our Vexilar, because our receivers are the most sensitive receivers on the planet, it gives us the ability to control the shape of the cone well, people think is a cone, but it's actually the, the sound blob out there, the creeping blob. So it allows us to do that. So why do you want to control the shape of your cone with the gain? Simple. 
if you want to be able to fish or look for fish, say, everyone thinks wider is better. The more I see, that's what I want to see. I want to see everything down there. Well, unfortunately, if you're looking in a three-dimensional perspective and you're over a school of crappies, and if there's 20 crappies within 12-foot circle of you, all you'll see is a giant blob of fish. What you want to do is focus on the fish that are directly below you. So with the game, you can dial out all the fish that are out here to just the fish that are directly below you to get a sharp, crisp, best resolution, best target separation, best target ID that you could ever imagine. But if you're looking for fish, if you want to find out where that school of crappies is and there's nothing directly below you in a low gain setting, you simply turn up your gain with the pro view and it begins to take the shape of a 12 degree or a 19 degree. We call it a pro view simply because it's, it's the average guy, and I don't mean any disrespect to all of our Vexilar fans out there, but the average guy just turns their Vexilar on and starts fishing. The pro view requires a little bit of the savvy that we're talking about, uh, about understanding what the crystal and the shape of the cone will do. If you can comprehend what you're doing by turning the gain up and down, controlling the size of your cone angle, the pro view is the ultimate deucer because it gives you the flexibility of using it in a lot of different scenarios. So now if I want to look for fish, I simply turn up the gain and it increases the receiver's ability to find things out here in the fringe areas. And it performs just like a 19 um, or even a 20 degree. But if you dial it down, it works extremely well in narrow conditions. The 19 only is wide open. In other words, it only gives you the super wide angle and you can't dial it down anymore. In fact, if you open this baby up, you could turn a 19 into a 50 degree if you open up the game. But again, if you're fishing suspended fish, that works great. But anytime you're fishing big groups or pods of fish, it almost is too much. So the 19 degree is the shallow water transducer. The 12 degree is probably Vexilar's most popular all around because most people fish um, 30 foot or less. So in the Vexilar world, uh, we oftentimes sell a lot of the 12 degrees because most people fish in 30 foot or less. The big advantage, so I guess if we look at it from one perspective, we say the 19 degree is, is good to say 20, 25 feet depending upon the bottom content. The softer the bottom, the shallower you have to use it because you'll find that the bottom, you end up turning up your gain more and it's a, it's a real nightmare. The 12 degree is really good to about 40 feet. And the, the nine degree or the pro view is, is 40 plus because it's the ultimate in flexibility. Now I should mention why, what a tri-beam does. Now the tri-beam takes, advantages, takes advantage, uh, it was designed and developed by Steve Bauman, the owner of Vexilar. He is truly one of the true pioneers, he's a member of the National Fishing Hall of Fame, this Minnesota Fishing Hall of Fame. He is a true icon in this industry because he's the one who discovered the use of three color sonar systems back in the uh, early 80s. Uh, for ice fishing and has developed it, nurtured it, and of course built Vexilar to the iconic company that it is today. He developed the tri-beam by taking advantage of the double cone system. Now, I, I, I'm getting kind of messy here. I wish I had more erase it all. But what the tri-beam does is takes advantage of the double cone to maximize the potential. There are multiple crystals inside of one housing. The tri-beam doesn't have the side lobes or the, the secondary crystals, uh, secondary sound. Vexlar takes advantage of those and turns them into primary uh, angles. So the, you don't have the big side lobes. Uh, so on a tri-beam, think of it this way. A tri-beam truly has pretty much straight angles for the nine. This is your nine. Twelve and twenty. There's not a lot of side lobes to it. And if you did this testing, uh, the same type of testing with a tri-beam, you'll say, well, wait a second. If I'm on a narrow beam, if I'm an eight foot of water, how big is my, my cone? Oh, it drives people crazy. Because if you're in super shallow water, you may only have a viewing area 
or maybe this big directly below your hole. So if you've got a 10 inch hole and you're right on the edge of your 10 inch hole, you may actually lose your lure because it's outside the primary range. You would turn up your game, but in many cases, because the unit doesn't have these expanding side lobes, you even don't see it. So the, the advantage with the tri-beam is great, in my opinion, you know, say in, in 20 foot of water or, or 10 or 20 foot of water and down because it doesn't have these huge side lobes. Uh, but if you want to see out and away uh, with more control like you have with your gain switch, uh, the standard crystals perform much differently. Uh, that's one of the, I guess, the big difference is that you don't gain much by turning up the gain on a tri-beam. You gain everything when you turn up the gain on a ProView, a 12, or even the nine, uh, 19 degree. But again, you have the ability with the gain to control the crystal a lot more. One of the concepts that I, that I like to talk about with the ProView, and this is something that is not a, uh, a technical fact uh, as far as the, the engineers that talk about it, but they look at it and they say, you know, it makes kind of a lot of sense for people to comprehend it. And I call it the sound bubble effect. The transducer emits a sound. The bigger the crystal, the more you have control of the sound coming back into the transducer and turning it into energy. The smaller the crystal, the less control you have of it. So when you see a big faced crystal like this, then you know that you're controlling the sound coming back in better than you could with any other type of transducer crystal. Smaller crystals are usually very wide beam. The concept that I have kind of, I, I work with because people can understand, is the sound bubble effect on a nine degree is narrower and stronger with thicker walls. A 19 degree is broader and when it expands like a bubble, the walls get thinner. By understanding this concept, you can see why interference can penetrate the walls of a wider 19 degree bubble than it can with a thicker walled 9 degree. This transducer sound, when put into the water, is everywhere. It's, it emits it everywhere. The receiver side of it, when the, when the sound bounces back to the crystal, that's what we're controlling now. Because when I shoot this into the room, everybody in the room can hear it if you have the right kind of hearing, just like a speaker of a radio. It floods the room. But if you take your ear and focus it to just what you're looking at directly in front of you, you can't hear the guys talking behind you. That's what the, the eight degree or the, the pro view, the nine degree here, what the pro view does is it focuses the receiver to hear what's directly below you and the sound bubble is thicker. So it's harder for other sounds to penetrate it and cause interference. So if you're on a guy, if you're a guy, for example, who fishes Lake of the Woods, which is a common place here in Minnesota to fish, fishing in 27 to 35 foot of water, and there's five guys fishing in one 8 by 12 fish house. Everybody's fishing. Well, if everyone had a pro view deucer, no one would have interference because you can dial out all the interference and the sound bubble is so tight and strong, it won't affect, nothing can penetrate it to cause interference. But if everyone used 19 degrees, super wides, very thin wall, the sound would penetrate it and cause interference. So if you get the right kind of ice deucer for your Vexilar system and the kind of fishing that you like to do, you will be absolutely amazed on how much better your Vexilar will perform. Remember, the transducer is just as important as the unit itself. And then one closing thing about transducers, Matt, if I could, I want to talk about this, is that people say, well, how do I know if I've got a good transducer or a bad transducer? Well, basically, there's two things to realize. When you're, when you're ice fishing and you find that you have to turn up your gain uh, above the 12 o'clock position just to see your lure, that means you're getting a weak transducer. Now, if you're fishing by yourself, that's great. But you will find that any time you turn your gain above the 10 o'clock position on your gain switch, you'll start picking up interference from everybody. So the goal when you're fishing with anglers and when you're actually fishing is to keep your gain as low as possible. If you cannot see your target when your transducer um, is turned up to 12 or a 12 o'clock position straight up, then you know you've got a, a weaker transducer. Or if your transducer picks up a lot of interference naturally, 
That's a sign of a failing transducer. Now one of the quick ways you can test this is ask one of your buddies to plug in their transducer to your unit. Again, just unscrew it, plug it in. Oh my goodness, look, there's my lure, it pops right out. Well, you got a weak transducer and you'll have to replace it. Nobody knows why a transducer will fail. To be honest with you, it's just a piece of ceramic stone that sits there and looks at you. But somewhere along the line, it loses its ability to turn the electricity into sound and sound back into electricity. It could be a jar. It could be who knows what it is. Nah, nobody really knows. Um, I've had transducers that last for 10 or 15 years without any problem, and I've had transducers that failed in two years. The important thing is you take care of it, you clean the face of it before you start using it. When it's wetted, wipe it on your pants leg and then put it back in the water. Always make sure it's, it's down your hole straight because if it's leaning against the side of your fish hole, it'll shoot off at an angle. You'll have to turn up your gain to see your lure. Oh, now you're getting all a bunch of interference. So make sure it's always hanging straight. Um, I hope that helps understand a little bit more about the, the double cone system of what each transducer can do and how you can get the right understanding of how the gain can help you with the right transducer to help you find and ultimately catch more fish. I'm Tom Zanenko from Vexilar, and to learn more, you can always check out vexilar.com.